All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look at relative reference again. I have here in H4, you see I have a column, first six months. I want a total of our products sold in the first six months. So I'm going to start my formula, as always, with an equal sign. My function, open my parentheses, and using the point and click, I'm going to choose B4 through C4. Close my parentheses and hit enter. There we go. And remember, I'm getting this error. I'm going to tell it to ignore because it recognizes that I didn't add these numbers into the formula. But that's okay. I didn't need those. All I wanted were these. Now, when we look at our formula, remember, with the relative reference, we're basically telling Excel, okay, I want you to select that range, B4 to C4, or in this case, add the range of B4 through C4. Add those cells that are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The 5th and 6th cells to the left of where my formula is. And of course, if I pull this all the way down with my fill handle, we'll see once again that it works exactly the way we expected taking those cells, one, two, three, four, the fifth and the sixth values to the left. And let me show you another trick here about this little smart tag. If I select all of those and choose ignore error, it gets rid of them all. Now, remember, the cells are relative to where our formula is. And if I copy this formula and I paste it here, Let's ignore this thing. Take a look at it. Now it is equal sum D4 through E4. Remember here it was B4 through C4. Now it's D4 through E4. What happened? Remember, relative reference. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It added up the two values in these cells, 5 and 6, over from this cell. And again, I can grab that down there. That's your relative reference, okay? In this worksheet, we see that we have an entire year's worth of sales data for our six stores. And up here, you'll notice we have a bonus percentage, 8.5%. We are indeed going to give all of our stores a little bit of bonus because we had such a great year. And we need to calculate what that's going to be. It's going to be 8.5%. Well, it's a pretty simple, straightforward formula. All we have to do, we'll start right here in H5. And again, start with our equal sign. I can go ahead and I just typed in the SU. And you see it gives me a list of all of these functions with the SU. I'm going to double click there. And see that it finishes up for me, puts in my opening parentheses, my syntax. Uh, we'll work more with that later on in, in future lessons. But equal sum, let's continue to write our formula. It's this, F5, our total, multiplied by our bonus, which is right there. And once again, we use those cell references. When I hit enter, I see that store 60613, it's going to get a $53,000 bonus. Wow, that's pretty good. Now... We'll go ahead and we will fill down. And, uh-oh. Well, let's widen this up and try and figure out what happened. Holy cow. I want to work at this store. They're getting a heck of a bonus. What happened? Why is this all screwy? Well, let's take a look at our formula. Equal sum F5 times H3. We look in here. F6. All right, that's good. That's what we want times h4 times h4 but our value is in h3 not h4 that's where the problem is remember how our relative references work we told excel multiply this value here two to the left times the value that's two above and two to the left so when we dragged our formula down it did the same thing it took this number fine but it went one two and we see the word bonus. There's no number in there. So it didn't have anything to multiply by. So it gave us this error. 
And now here, it multiplied this times this and gave us a really great bonus. And then when we got down here, well, it was the total times this. And yeah, that's a really high number. Okay, so what do we do? First of all, let's get rid of this and start over. We have to create what is called an absolute reference, whereby we will tell Excel, yes, it's fine to go ahead and take this value, that is 2 to the left of my formula, but I want you to always refer to this cell, this value up here. Refer to it absolutely every time. So, in fact, let's rewrite the formula and we'll start once again with our equal sum open parentheses this times now what i want us to do is there's a couple ways we can do this we can go ahead and we can add in the symbol for the absolute reference which is a dollar sign then the first letter h dollar sign three and we'll close our parentheses. I will hit enter, and when I drag down this way, there, that's a little bit more reasonable, isn't it? Let's take a look. See that in all of these formulas subsequently, the absolute reference is telling it to always refer to the value here in H3. Now, the dollar signs. Why is it the dollar sign? Don't get hung up on the fact that it's a dollar sign and that we're dealing with money here. The dollar sign is just a symbol. Think of it as an anchor. And the reason we have them in front of the H and in front of the 3 is it will tell it, the one in front of the H tells it, always refer to column H. The one in front of the 3 tells it always refer to row 3. So that's why we have dollar sign H dollar sign three now I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna delete this again and I'm gonna show you a fun little shortcut let's go equals sum and I'm gonna write our formula incorrectly at first because it's very easy to do and you may not realize when you start to write your formula that you do want that absolute reference now there's two things you can do you can well there's three things you can do you can delete it and rewrite the formula which is what we just did I can go ahead here into my formula bar and add my dollar signs in this way like that and you see that worked just fine let's get rid of this I'm going to know this formula by heart, and so will you by the time we're done. What I can do, and this is keyboard shortcut alert, gang. Let's go back in here, and I'm going to take my insertion bar, that little cursor there. I'm going to stick it right in there between the H and the 3. And on my keyboard, the key's up on the top numbered and lettered F1 through F12. I will use F4. And the F4 adds in that absolute reference for me. See that it added those dollar signs in before the H before the 3. So you can either edit it and type them in after the fact. You can use your F4 to add them in after the fact. Or you can go ahead and add the dollar signs in while you're writing the formula. And that is my absolute reference. All right, something that I want you to remember is the keyboard shortcut for that absolute reference. Remember F4. You want to use that F4 to enter those dollar signs in for your absolute reference. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.